So before we start working with large language models in LangChain, I want us to have a, a decent high level understanding of what a large language model is. It will help explain a few things. It's not completely necessary, but it definitely will help uh, with your, your insight when working with the framework. And so what is a large language model? So large language models are based off the transformer architecture. This is a type of neural network that was invented or you know, created in 2017 uh, to be able to uh, advance what our capabilities with natural language processing, our ability to do things like summarize text, translate text, uh, and, and that is why it's used in GPT with uh, you know in, in chatbots. But it's used for other tasks, but it's mainly used for NLP and. Over here on the right is, an ex is a diagram of the first transformer architecture created. Uh, this is called a sequence-to-sequence -sequence transformer. There's another type of transformer called causal LM, and this is the, what the GPT architecture was based off of. But starting with the most uh, fundamental one, this is our sequence-to-sequence -sequence transformer. How it works is, let's just say we're trying to translate a sentence from English to Spanish. And so right here on the bottom, you see inputs, right? What you will do is you will input an English sentence over here on the output side. You will out, you will out, you will put into the model or input into the model over here the Spanish translation that you desire. Um, and it, it may be a truncated portion of the Spanish translation because uh, you're trying to get the model to predict the next Spanish word that matches the English sentence. Um, and then what you do is you funnel uh, the English sentence in here, you funnel the Spanish sentence in here, it sends through the model, and then what the model does is it outputs a probability distribution and over what it thinks is the next most probable uh, token, it's not actually a word, um, and what it does is it picks the most probable token or it does some sort of uh, sampling from that probability distribution. Um, so it picks the most probable or maybe the second or third most probable, however you designed it. And then it inputs it back in and then it feeds, you feed the English and now the Spanish sentence in and then it outputs the next most probable word, uh, token, sorry, and then it inputs in. It keeps doing that until it's at the end of the sentence and hopefully it's generated the correct uh, Spanish translation. Now I said token. You'll, you'll commonly see that these models are trained to predict the next best word. Uh, that's a good way to think about it, but it's not accurate. Um, what they actually do is they're trained to predict the next best token. And so these models, they'll take in the English sentence and it, they'll, they'll tokenize it. And so what it does is it, you can think, you can, I think the best way to think of it is that it breaks the sentence up, all the words in the sentence up, into subwords. And so like trained, for instance, maybe train, that may be a token, and then ed would be the next token. And so trained would be split into two tokens and then inputted. And so when the model, let's just say the model is trying to complete this sentence, these transformer models are then, and then you're trying to get it to predict trained, it'll first, if it does it right, output train that token and then you'll feed in this sentence again and you want it to predict ed and then it'll predict ed and then so on and so on some words do not have subwords like on or a because uh, a is one letter but that's essentially how that's essentially how it works now in a causal lm the only difference is that we don't have this portion right here this is called the encoder portion so this this block over here imagine just taking that off and only keeping this de decoder portion, which is what, uh, which is what this is right here. And then GPT would be a stack of these, so you would just continue stacking them up. It's a very large model. I don't know how many stacks, but you would do it, uh, do many of them. And so the base LLMs, right? So there's different types of LLMs. You have the base LLM. So when these models are first trained, when they're first, uh, you know, trained, what they do is they're trained on a large corpus of text like the internet and you train it and you try to get it to be really good at predicting the next word in the sentence and so you may train it you may, may train it on several sentences you know thousands millions billions of sentences and paragraphs where you truncate it off you leave off one word and you get it to predict the next word and then once it gets really good at that um, we're then going to instruction tune them and so now 
a base LLM is only going to be good at generating text, and so it's going to be really good at doing things like autocomplete. Uh, but we want this model to not just autocomplete our instruction, we want it to be able to take in an instruction and, and, and give us the response. Uh, like ChatGPT is really good at writing articles. If you tell it to write an article, it'll write an article. If you tell it to summarize some text, it'll summarize that text. And so how do we get it from base LLM, where it's just good at generating text, to a structure tuned? We can do it several ways. Um, but the two most common is we can just give it a list of input, input prompts, right? And then give it the uh, desired response. So we can have like humans go in and like generate the actual inputs and desired responses, and then just train it to be able to generate the right responses. The same way we trained it to generate the Spanish translation. Um, you can think of it as just translating the prompt into a proper response. Um, and so that's one way to do it, to give it the right answer. And another way to do it is to have to do reinforcement learning from human feedback. And this is uh, what was used in GPT. And what you do here is you have humans go in and actually grade different responses. And they may give a really good grade to certain responses, a really bad one to the others. And then you use reinforcement learning uh, to train the model to be able to produce those responses that got the higher reward and to not produce those responses that got a, a bad reward. In reinforcement learning, the model is going to learn how to generate the responses that get the highest reward. And so that's a basic understanding of LLMs. Um, that's pretty much all you need. Uh, the key thing, uh, key things are, you know, you don't learn the architecture, the transformer architecture, what a base LLM is, what an instruction tuned LLM, LLM is. And then also the fact that this model is going to output a probability distribution over tokens. So it predicts uh, the next best token, but we say predict the next next word because it's just easier to think about. But in reality, it's actually the next best token.